venit la o nouă ediție a emisiunii Ziua se apropie. În minutele care urmează vă prezentăm un al patrulea raport european de la Bruxelles din anul 2024 din seria de rapoarte lunare de acest fel. Prezentatorul Iosi Lemkovic i are ca invitați pe europarlamentarul suedez David Lega și pe Thomas Sendel pentru a discuta despre viitoarele alegeri europarlamentare și despre sondajul realizat de Coaliția Europeană pentru Israel în vederea cunoașterii atitudinii statelor membre ale Uniunii Europene față de Israel. We are now less than two months away from the European Parliament elections, which will take place from 6 to 9 of June. In the next weeks, uh, thousands of candidates from across the 27 EU member states will compete for a seat in the European Parliament, 720 seats. One of the current MEPs who have been very active both in combating anti-Semitism and in support of Israel and the Abraham Accords is David Lega, MEP from Sweden. Thank you, David Lega, for being with us. Thank you so much. David Lega is a member of the European People's Party and a member until today of the European Parliament Foreign Affairs Committee. This is the edition, the new edition of the European Report. We are going in this edition to look back at the last five years and the work of Mr. Lega as, uh, as well as a look at the bigger picture of the Israel-EU relations, the picture of pro-Israel support in the European Parliament, which is very important for us. As we speak and we take this opportunity that the European Coalition for Israel has just presented its second annual pro-Israeli vote ranking. And for this, David Lega will be joined by a founding director of the European Coalition for Israel, Thomas Sandel. Thank you for being with us. My name is Yossi Lemkovic from European Jewish Press and Europe Israel Press Association. But before we go uh, into the main uh, topics of uh, today's program, I would like to know your uh, takeaways, your thought about uh, uh, such attacks, Iran, uh, as well as your, uh, what do you think about the stalemate of the situation uh, today and uh, where we go from here and where we can find a solution to all the Middle East uh, problems. So first... The, the little question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's start with that. <laughs> so I will start yeah, with you, you so uh, David Lega. And thank you for having me here. It's an a honor. Pleasure. Um, well, the, the attack, as you rightly said, was unprecedented. What, that Iran, for the first time, launched rockets in their own name not only using their proxies, Hezbollah or Hamas, but, but actually doing it through IRGC. And, um, but that's not the only thing that was unprecedented in my view. The most important thing was that Israel did not stand alone for the first time. Not only by getting support and weapons delivered by other countries, but actually other countries actively helping Israel in, def in their defense. Many other countries, both from the Middle East and the US, UK, France, helped. And that was unprecedented as well, which means that for the first time, we had a large joint defense of the state of Israel. And what we need to make sure now, in my view, is that we need to have a joint retaliation against Iran and what they did. This is what needs to happen after this one. So, you, so what you, we should do, we need to call for three things. And me and the EPP group will call for three things. 
we will call for finally a terror designation of the IRGC. That needs to happen. It's for me a mystery. The parliament has pushed and voted for it so many times and still Borrell has not uh, done it. We need a terror designation of IRGC. We need a terror designation of Hezbollah in its entirety. It's time to finish the silly talk about a political branch of Hezbollah. And the third thing that we need to do is to directly reinstate all UN sanctions on Iran. That's what we need to do. That's a common and joint retaliation. But when you, you, met, you just mentioned joint re retaliation, so that you, you don't uh, uh, agree with the idea to have only Israel retaliating against uh, Well, Iran. the world changed when, when Israel didn't have to de defend itself alone. We did a joint defense. It's quite natural that we do a joint retaliation. I mean, the whole basis and the whole funding of the Abraham Accords is a normalization of relations with Israel, but also an, an increased knowledge and awareness of the threat that Iran is facing, is, is actually being for the whole of the Middle East. And this is just a natural step. We will speak later about this uh, idea yes. of joint defense. Yes, uh, but I'm and, so and the angry of after AU this relations. weekend. So I'm already there. This okay. is what we need to do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thomas Sandel, the same question for you. Uh... Th thank you, yes, uh, Yossi. The same question and the same answers, I should say. I, I think uh, David Lega put it, put it so well. And, and if we'd only have more MEPs like this or policymakers in Europe, we would be in a very different place now. Uh, what we need to remember is also how we got to this stage. This is, as, as David said, it's the first time that Iran directly attacks uh, Israel from its own territory. <clears throat> but of course, they've been playing this game for years and years and years in financing and, and uh, training and equipping their terrorist proxies, Hezbollah, Hamas, and now also the, the Houthis. And uh, <clears throat> I always, I've been repeated it time and time again in this program that, you know, we should already years ago have come to the conclusion that, as David said, Hezbollah in its entirety should have been banned and um, the IRGC uh, clearly should, should be banned. And, and I think it's sometimes, um, uh, you know, naming names is, is helpful in, a, in an open democracy. And, and I think that um, it's, it's such a pity when we have such a strong European leadership at the moment that there is this weak link with the high representative for foreign policy, uh, Joseph Borrell, who the first thing he did after the attack was to, to call Iran and, and, and just uh, uh, let them know that there won't be any, any real consequences. Um, since, since he has taken this stance that, you know, he wants to keep those lines open regardless, regardless the cost. Now I think the time has come uh, also for Joseph Borrell to, to realize that uh, he, he will need to choose sides either on the side of the free world or on the side of the Islamic Republic. So, um, David Lega, uh, you have been uh, one, and I said it in the, in the tr introduction, you have been one of the most vocal uh, MEP in the combat against anti-Semitism, uh, which is rising since 7th of October uh, everywhere. Uh, I would say everywhere in the world, but also in your opposition to the Islamic Republic of Iran. Uh, looking back at these uh, last five years as an MEP in the European Parliament, uh, what are for you uh, your highlights in this period? What have been the most important uh, thing that happened in terms of these topics? and? Uh, have you been sometimes disappointed? I, I, I'm sure that you have been disappointed, but what, by what? Yes. Um, well, I think we had many important wins during this mandate, not the least realizing and an increased knowledge about the, the rising, thre the, the threat of the rising anti-Semitism in Europe and, and internationally. And I think that the October 7 attacks 
unfortunately didn't create the, the rise of anti-Semitism, but it brought it to the surface. And that's extremely problematic. We've seen the rise for so many years, and now hopefully we're doing more. Even in my own country, in my, my, the city where I was born, in Gothenburg, in the city where I live close to now, in Malmö, P Jews are advised not to wear their kippah not to wear their Magin David. And for me, that is incredible that a, a rabbi of a congregation advises his, the, the people of the congregation not to wear their kippah. That tells you a bit about the level of the, the threat and uh, the, the uh, unsafety that so many Jews in Sweden are, are experiencing right now. The wins that we have, one is that we put conditionality onto the, the uh, aid giving to UNRWA, not the least regarding the, Pal the Palestinian textbooks, which were horrible several years ago uh, already. And then now it's still on there, even after the October 7 attacks. Now it's even more important that the next generation mm -hmm. is not brought up on hate and lies. This is extremely important. So that that conditionality is still there on UNRWA is extremely important. Um, that my amendment, my, my, my suggestion and nomination for Masa, Gina Masa Amini and the women of Iran to win the Sakharov Prize was an extremely important signal to the freedom movement of Iran. That we say that we see you, we haven't forgotten about you and we will continue to do what we can to support you. Because unfortunately, media and many politicians can only have one crisis in their mind at the same time. We can, first we only looked at Iran, then we only looked at Russia, Ukraine, and now everyone is looking at Gaza, which is Iran's and Putin's goal with the whole attack, and that we need to be clear of. That's why we need to make sure that we don't forget that. Um, that's one win. One more win was the creation of the first Abraham Accords caucus network within the European Parliament. The first time that the European Parliament stood for other pieces, peaceful solutions and supported other initiatives that didn't include the two-state solution. And that was important. And you chaired the, the, the And the I focus. was nominated to by the speaker, uh, the president of the parliament, to chair the, uh, the um, Abraham Accords Network. I mean, you can be for a two-state solution and for the Abraham Accords, which was an incredible, just imagine what the situation would look like right now in the Middle East mm -hmm. if we didn't have the foundation of the Abraham Accords to stand on. David Lega, I, I learned that uh, you are not running for the European Parliament, uh, which is a uh, yes. pity for, uh, I would say, uh, the pro-Israel uh, camp. Uh, what is the reason why you are not running? Uh, the main reason is that my daughter is three and a half years old and she cries every time I put my suit on because she knows I'm gone mm -hmm. for four days. <laughs> um, and she has a right also to have a present father in her life. So I will absolutely continue to make the world as good a place I can, and I will continue to work for Israel, but I will find another way where I don't have to travel every week. That's a good reason. You know, I will tell you, <laughs> three weeks ago, I was in DC yeah. for a, a meeting with APAC and uh, members of Congress and the Senate for, for um, discussing how to best support Israel and the aid package in, in the US. Um, and before I left, my daughter said to me again, three and a half years old, why are you going? And she started crying. And my wife, we tried to say it easy and explain it to her. So she said, well, daddy has to go and help the Jews, she said. <laughs> and you know what my daughter said? She said, again. <laughs> <laughs> and then she said, is it Putin? And I said, absolutely. She understands the connections that Putin. many of my colleagues don't yeah. understand. <laughs> Thomas, um I, I said in the, also in the tradition that uh, the European Coalition uh, uh, for Israel has just presented uh, its uh, second annual vote uh, ranking on issues related to Israel. I would like 
uh, if possible, to summarize mm -hmm. this uh, survey, mm -hmm. uh, which is very important for uh, people to know, because uh, when they're voting, uh, mm -hmm. uh, who is uh, in the favor of Israel, uh, which party, which uh, political party, which party in each uh, uh, member states uh, uh, regarding the voting, also the voting since the 7th of October. Mm -hmm. So um, could you summarize, because we, we are short, we have only 27 minutes in this program, but uh, yeah. I'm sure you, you, can, yeah. uh, you can do it. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Jose, and also say to, to David that, that you leaving this parliament is, um, is a gain for your daughter, and we, we appreciate that. It's a loss for this parliament, but we also want to thank you on, thank on behalf you so of our viewers for all your wonderful work so far. It's been so, my honor. Yeah. So lo looking at the Israel ranking, we did uh, the first ever last year, and we thought it would be important to do one just uh, ahead of the European elections. So we are looking primarily at uh, how the political parties are positioned, how they have voted in, in votes which are critical for the safety and security for Israel. We, we looked at this over a five-year period, so the whole term. We have also looked uh, specifically after October 7, what has happened. And, uh, and finally, we added a new dimension, which is very relevant for today's program, and that is on Iran. So how do the, the, the parties line up when it comes to issues critical to, uh, to um, uh, the, the Islamic Republic? Mm. For example, banning the RGC that we spoke about earlier. To, to summarize, and I obviously uh, encourage everyone to, to go to the website ec4i.org and find the, the whole ranking. Uh, um, but we can say that it confirms what we've seen for a number of years already, that there is a clear um, uh, left-right ideological uh, divide. Um, uh, parties on the center-right tend to be more uh, pro-Israel, whereas those on the left are, are less so, and those uh, in the extreme left are making up those parties which are most critical. Um, I, could, I could mention, uh, uh, interestingly, that uh, Vox from, from Spain is, is uh, topping the list this, uh, uh, this year. Uh, David's uh, uh, party is doing very well. You are the most pro-Israel in the EPP group which I want to commend you for. When it comes to nations, we also have a divide between uh, what we used to call Old Europe and New Europe. Poland and uh, Hungary and the Visegrad uh, countries, uh, including uh, Czech Republic, are the most uh, uh, pro-Israel, whereas, not surprisingly, Ireland would be in a league of its own of being uh, critical or anti-Israel. Uh, followed by countries like Portugal and, and Spain. Um, we also have to remember that this could be measured usually in two ways, how the nations vote in the uh, European Council, but um, since those votes are confidential, uh, this is the best way where we in a transparent way can, can really measure the, the parties. Uh, finally, the um, issues on Iran, uh, there seems to be a clear convergence on how the parties relate to Israel, also asked how they relate to the, uh, to the Islamic Republic. And, um, and, and so those countries that would be most uh, anti-Israel, if you want to call it that, would at the same time be the most pro-Islamic Republic. Uh, we do know in some cases that here we have parties which are uh, also funded by, by the Islamic Republic. And I think this is a, a matter for concern for us um, as, as an electorate to, to know also where the funding comes from. But I think this is important information as we now prepare for the European elections. Those who uh, uh, have a, a, a special heart for issues related to the Jewish people, I would really encourage everyone to, to take part of this. Uh, and, and also pay, maybe just final point to say, because I know uh, you mentioned APAC, David, and they were given this uh, question in, in, in Washington that, uh, um, you know, when they do their ranking and, and they say, but, you know, this party and that party, they think differently on, on issue A, B, C, D. Uh, this uh, clearly only measures attitudes towards the state of Israel. So we're not uh, trying to give any comprehensive view on, on all issues which may be uh, important for, for the voter. But uh, this is important information.
David Legai, uh, regarding this survey, I think you 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 have seen this uh, the the results of the of this survey. And uh, what are your observations and uh, comments on on this? Do you think that this is also as uh, Thomas mentioned? This is also an indication, maybe, of uh, what could happen with the election, with the next elections. Well, I, I of, hope uh, that I'm happy to 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 see our results in the in the in the, in the um, report, and also naturally that more people see it because this is an extremely important issue, not only for the Middle East, not only for Israel, but also for Europe. We see an increased influence of Iranian authorities in our own institutions, in our member states. Um, and honestly, we tried the soft approach with Putin. And where did that lead us? We cannot afford to be as naive again with Iran as we were with Russia. We know that they work together. We know that Iran sells drones and rockets to, uh, to Russia. We know that Iranian weapons are used to kill Europeans. Um, we know that Iran has the expressed goal of eradicating Israel from the face of the earth. And I cannot see how Europe, who was based on the ruins of World War II and the Holocaust, could ever, ever accept that that is a mission of a regime. Because that's what led us here. Um, and we need to continue to learn by our, our mistakes. The European Union is a peace project and it changed Europe's future. And I'm very sure that the Abram Accords is the start of the Middle East's European Union. And that's, if we allow it to continue to be that, that's where that will take us. But we also know that Iran is doing everything in its power to fight it. We spoke about EU-Israel relations, which is at the core uh, uh, of our uh, thinking, you know. Uh, we saw uh, in the beginning, uh, uh, when the, the 7 October uh, uh, started, when this massacre, the pogrom yeah. uh, in southern Israel uh, uh, started, we uh, saw it as a game changer in EU-Israel relations because in the, initially the EU step up, uh, you know, stood up in, in full support of Israel. Uh, but with the time and with the war in Gaza, this uh, support faded uh, 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 a bit. But do you think, both of you, that I will start with you, uh, David Lega, do you think that the current escalation in the, the conflict between, uh, uh, between Israel and Iran will affect uh, EU opinions, also public opinions, but also the politicians' uh, view on Iran? Well, our member states are already supporting Israel and helping Israel to defend itself. So naturally, it has already changed it. And, but we must also accept the horrible situation for the people of Gaza. Uh, it's, it's absolutely horrible. And we need to do what we can, as many do, to try to reduce the, the suffering there. At the same time, as we must understand that the suffering there is Hamas' fault. They wanted this, they started it, and that can never be forgotten. But regardless, it's a horrible situation in, in Gaza that we also need to, to address. Thomas, the same question. Uh, is yes. this uh, something can happen because of the Iran, uh, uh, Israel-Iran escalation? Something could better the, uh, the relations between AU and Israel? It's, it's again a debate uh, inside me between the optimist and the pessimist. You know, the optimist would say that uh, clearly we are going back to, to a few days after Gaza when Macron said that we need an international coalition to, uh, to defeat mm -hmm. Hamas. 
and now as we we uh, it's just uh, two days um, away from from the uh, attack by Iran that we are he hearing a similar level of commitment and we saw it also put into action as, as David rightly mentioned so I, I see um, positive signs that this could be a game changer that that finally uh, the Western world the free world would would understand that Iran is not only a threat to Israel but to to all of us who, who are living or want to live in free and, and, and democratic societies uh, but again as you mentioned you know we we, we tend to have these uh, high uh, you know it's it's high and low and and um, it requires so little for the enemies of Israel to find still another way to twist this around. I read an editorial uh, just this morning, which again puts all the blame on Israel. I mean, Israel has just been attacked and they're already accusing the government for wanting revenge. And, and when I hear the word revenge, which I don't hear in the Russia-Ukraine war, when I hear the, the wor word revenge always related to, to Israel and the Jewish people, it reminds me of a very deep um, anti-Semitic uh, um, rhetorics that we've heard for, for such a long time. So I hope the optimist within me is right and, uh, and we can see a change. This brings us uh, to a close of this edition of uh, the European Report. Uh, while the two uh, uh, programs, the last two programs, have been uh, about the European elections, which is normal, let us not forget that uh, uh, there are still uh, 133 hostages held in uh, Gaza, you know, uh, after more than 193 days. Finally, I want uh, to use this opportunity to say a big thank to you, uh, David Lega, for not only for joining this program, but also for having been such an outstanding uh, champion of uh, all issues that are important for uh, those who watch this program. Thank you. thank you so much. And thank you also to you, uh, Thomas Sandel, mm, uh, found, founding the director of the European Coalition for Israel, for helping to promote better relations between Europe and Israel. Thank you so much. My name is Yossi Lemkovic, and this has been the uh, European Report. See you next month. Emisiunea Ziua se apropie, se încheie aici. Vă mulțumim pentru atenție și vă dăm o nouă întâlnire săptămâna viitoare la aceeași oră. Sunt Codruța Burghelea, vă spun la revedere și Dumnezeu să vă binecuvânteze!